Hello everybody, I'm SGM. Welcome back to the Vault Hunters Beginners Tutorial. Uh, my version of it anyways. I, in between episodes I did make the uh, vault or the tool station here. And today we'll go over the tools and the jewels that we're going to be using in it as well as I'll jump into a vault and go go with go through with you if we find any other interesting rooms inside there so we're going to put this guy down here and we'll take a look at the ui so in here we can craft jewels we'll take gemstones rutadites gems silver scrap and vault bronze we can craft chromatic iron picks which takes chromatic iron ingots driftwood and vault bronze and the same with all the other chromatic iron tools. We do need to get up to vault level 20 before we can craft the next tier of tool, but in here we've got five basic types of tools. So uh, iron pick, iron axe, shovel, iron hammer, and the iron sickle. If I'm not mistaken, the hammer does area mining, so you can mine out a three by three uh, and so on and so forth, and you can actually increase the radius that it um, mines at. I'm not 100% sure on that because I've never ever used one. <laughs> I've never really gotten deep enough into the pack to, to have that effect. Uh, but the Iron Sickle is another, it's another one that I kind of do quite a bit in the fact that um, it will, it's faster at mining, or it's not, it's not fast at harvesting any of the blocks so this is the one i typically put my coin affinity on so that i can mine up those piles of uh, coins really fast and not break the blocks that are beneath it because i'm mining so fast so we'll just dip back into the quest line here so for making the tool station i just got two more gemstones which is an ingredient for crafting the jewels and then for the vault tools this will tell you about basically about all of the about the tools right um, and what some of the effects that some of the jewels will have on it um, and then what some of the modifiers will help you out with as well so there's quite a bit of good um, information in here you should read through it because it'll teach you more than I'm willing to do so in this here so we're going to get some uh, some jewels as a reward for crafting a chromatic iron pick. So it doesn't actually give us a choice on um, what we can craft at the at the beginning, but that's okay. Let's just grab three of these guys. That should give us lots of coins. Um, oh, and this plates I don't need, but the one good thing about the, this tool station here is that it doesn't have a huge... I think we can fit up to 5,000 of any one of these items in there, so it's a great place to actually store um, these items because you can, it doesn't take up a whole bunch of stacks in there. So let's just go ahead and we'll get ourselves a chromatic iron pick. And this will be the pick that we'll be using inside the um, bolts at all times. So you can see, well, this one doesn't even have a mining speed on it, but at least this has the, uh, that it's got 4,000 durability, whereas this one would be consider considerably less. Uh, and then the, the first thing that we're going to do to this guy is that we're going to um, enchant it up with our Vault Enchanter. The three enchants that we're going to want, obviously we're going to want Efficiency 5. I don't have any XP levels because I died at the last episode, uh, but that's not a problem because we've got tons of these bottles of enchanting. Oh, I am getting, okay. Thought I wasn't getting them. Just for efficiency's sake, I can 
get as few levels as possible off the start. So efficiency and unbreaking are the two definite ones. And then inside the vault, I like to have silk touch all the time so that whenever I'm mining the ores, I'll get the, um, I'll get the ore in its ore, I'll get the vault gems in their ore form, which then I can worry about breaking later. Oh, we need level. Um, and then the other thing it will give me is I'll get the uh, vault stone in the raw form, which I can bring back here and break um, to get more of the chipped vault stones so that we can make more of the vault rocks for um, making the, the vault rocks. Yes. What are they called? Crystals. That's what they're called. And yes, so typically my in vault pick is the um, is the vault one with the silk touch, and then I'll put fortune three on this diamond pickaxe, which I use in the overworld, along with the mending. It keeps it topped up um, because you get the experience when you break those ores when you're back here. So. That is the way I usually set them up. I'm just not going to do the fortune on that one right now. We can always do that later. Uh, so we need to go in here. We can complete that off. And then this will talk, start talking about the jewels. And with the sound of the thunder, I know I can sleep away this rain, which is great. grab all of these jewels for now and we can talk about these so we can line up these ones with the similar colors because the ones with the same colors do the same things notice this one is changing the color because it's got multiple different um, modifiers on it but these ones because they only have living they only have the one right So we do have to do a little bit of um, looking here, because I think this wants a jewel applicator. So we need this station to be able to put the jewels on our tools, and then we'll get some chromatic steel and get out of it. This is a, like a, a second tier. So this is like the gold of the, um, of the vault mod. A little bit better than iron but um, it's also yet also have to craft usually typically you have to craft to get it uh, so let's go in here and we'll take a look at the tool applicator so it needs six planks a gemstone and an anvil yes so we should have enough iron to make an anvil I do not no, I do. I, I have just enough. Not just enough, but... Should have been grabbing some anvils from inside the vaults, maybe. Uh, so we'll need some of these logs. 24, if I can math correctly. Make six of those planks. We'll need a piece of wood. Crafting table. And what else am I forgetting? The jewel, right? Gemstone. With this pick, I'm going to be looking to get these affinities on there. Um, the coin I'm going to save for the sickle, because I'm going to make one of those as well. Um, just basically, if I put the coin affinity on here, and I break, oops, I break the um, 
I break the coins really fast and then I'll break the block under it, which most of the time doesn't matter, but sometimes it does matter. So that's why I like to put the uh, coin affinity on a separate tool. So we have capacity. So under the chromatic iron pick level, then the capacity is 100. So we can put up to 100 points of things onto our jewel. So I'm just thinking about using this super one, but you know what? I think we got lots of space, right? We can get Twenty-five, fifty, seventy-seven. You go up to ninety-four with this one, but then that leaves. Yeah, and I'm gonna leave myself a little bit of space on this one because I might want to put on something like axing or shoveling. So that, like, especially if I put shoveling on here, it'll help with those X marks, the spot rooms. I'll be able to dig through that sand a little bit faster um, while I'm under the water. Um, but, yeah, we'll just do this and we'll uh, leave over a little bit. So this will leave 23 capacity on it and we'll be able to instantly mine living, gilded, and ornate chests while we're inside the vault. And then we'll come back here and we'll make ourselves a sickle. And then we'll just put the coin affinity onto it. And this is where we have the option. I think I'll actually Throw a little bit of durability onto it too, just because it kind of gets rid of the jewel and it's will be better than just leaving the jewel hanging around, taking up inventory space. And of course, we're going to need to put efficiency and unbreaking on it. This one won't need the silk touch, obviously, because we're not going to be silk touching anything with it. We do need 10 more emeralds. Sickle, efficiency, and unbreaking. Oh, leave my level. Unbreaking. We got some fancy new tools now. I'll demonstrate them when we get into the vault. Uh, but for now, I'm going to demonstrate something that I typically do as a habit as well, is I'll leave my shulker here with my vault items inside. Do not leave your potion inside the shulker box and then go into the vault before you pick up pick it up because if you pull the vial out of your shulker box while you're in the vault you don't get to use the vial and then the other thing i've got my bounty table right beside there so we can go in and we can make sure that we activate this um, bounty as we're going in hopefully this time we find some find a diamond room in there but not uh, not counting on it super well, and I would like to have some water, and we may as well heal up as well while we can do that for the cost of uh, saturation instead of using the potion while we're in there. So first things first, this is an east-facing vault. We've got this sort of nether theme, deep. Deep slate theme. I guess it's not nether theme. Deep slate cave theme. And 
again, because they're early vaults, they are the elixir type. And again, I always skip the first room. If I needed dripstone, I could probably grab it while we're in this vault, but I didn't, uh, I didn't need it for my current um, crystal, so... Ooh, skeletons give quite a bit of juice. And then there's our first dweller, so we're now at one of eight. And wooden is the one kind that we don't have the affinity for. But I'm not too worried about that because um, you have to break these, like breaking regular chests. It takes quite a while, so I typically don't go for wooden affinity. Uh, maybe a little bit later on, on a different tool, that would be something that we go for, but not... Uh, here in the beginnings anyways. Hey, we got some living chests that we can show off the uh, the insta mines here. Um, I guess the other thing I forgot to do see sometimes it insta mines and sometimes it does the slow mine and I don't know the reason for that. got some garbage because we had to break some block or we break blocks accidentally <laughs> underneath uh, because we're mining so fast uh, but that's just a, an, a side effect of having that super super fast pick right <laughs> Another one? Where's the other one? Maybe there's a hole in the wall where he spawned? I'm not sure. And the wooden chests seem to be given a good amount of elixir in this vault as well, so maybe I'll finally finish a vault. But yeah, we did get this. Yes, I keep seeing more skeletons. That's the kind of juice that I want to see. So, yes, I'm looking like we're going to complete both the vault and the bounty in this one. Uh, no need to keep you with me while we do all this mundane stuff. Is this one in here somewhere? I know what I'm missing. <laughs> I see that little area there. This is where those guys came from. It's where one of them spawned, that's all. So that's, as you can see, that increases our speed quite a bit on uh, being able to gather loot in the vault here, right? So, to start adding things to here. Might as well add that. Oh, those I want. That can go in there. And usually between vaults you'll... Um, oh, I forgot to grab water from somewhere. So we're going to have to go down the normal way. And continue east. I'll find some water so that I can bucket clutch and uh, continue on and we'll bring you back if I find any interesting rooms. Oh, there's an interesting room right here. This is one of the my most favorite rooms to find in the early game because it will be full of the gilded chests. There's none up there. Okay. There's stairs going up and down. 
I don't have a magnet yet. That's the one thing that we're missing. I do have to do that to get those items. Yeah, these this um, special type of room also won't have any monsters in it. The only downside is it seems that these chests don't uh, give us very much of juice, but the big thing about these is those kinds give us the crafting materials as well as um, gear. We can find gear in those kinds of chests. So it's got an upstairs and a downstairs. Sometimes it just doesn't insta-break. The thing I like about those is that they break and disappear completely so you know if you've finished them or not. You don't have to look around the room and wonder, hey, did I open that chest or not? if I wanted. I'm gonna grab an anvil for giggles. Try and get some more things that I want into there. I think I'll keep the cauldron, but all of this stuff at the next stop, I'm going to have to offload it into a chest somewhere. Just like that. Mm, deep slate furnaces. Okay. So yeah, you've got the gist of this room. There's the upstairs portion, which I have left to show you yet. Oh, I forgot about that one. That was my dump chest. There's none of the pesky wooden ones in here to, to have for a dump chest. The upstairs is pretty straightforward. Um, just there's nothing on the main level to worry about, so you definitely just want to go up to the top and then go from area to area. I'm out of food because all the chests will be up here. Oh, there's a couple of chests there that giggles I'm gonna do that and then I can turn on this pickup upgrade and that means anything that's matching those items there will go straight into the backpack I 
don't often see chests in anywhere down here except and without the magnet that's not such the best idea oh that's awkward I don't see anything there that's super important so we'll forget about it all right, so that is this um, blacksmith tower. I don't really know what the proper name of this structure is, but that's that. We'll continue our way east, because east was the way we came in. This is the way I do my vaults. All right, we'll see you back in a few minutes. Oh, we just came across an area with lots of coins. So as you can see, that sickle was super handy now instead of taking forever just to break, like just bang, done, done, done. And what I can even do now is take those out of there and do that. You can see that the coins, they end up straight into our uh, pouch. So this is another one of the special rooms. Uh, Pirate Cove, it's just full of coins. And wasn't couldn't have, could not have been better timing for getting our our vault tools rocking. Okay, don't have my bucket filled up yet, so gonna have to do this the scaredy cat way. just going to be full of coins after this run, or after this room. But yeah, that's the basic gist of this room. No need to uh, hold you here while we keep talking about it, or while I, while I do this. See, even the sickle still breaks some blocks, which end up clogging up our inventory. Anyways, I'll pause it for you guys and we'll be back for the next interesting point. Alright, so I don't know how that happened, but I think I reversed my uh, recording and pause sessions, so I don't know if you saw everything. Uh, we ended up not completing that vault. Uh, if we look at H, go to our vault history, um, we ended up with a survived, which is not a completion. Um, because I spent so much time in that pirate cove, I ended up not getting um, as many chests, and especially like the, the two special rooms, the coin, all the coin piles in the pirate cove and all of the ornate chests in the uh, blacksmith room. Did, were not good suppliers of the elixir, so I didn't complete the vault because I spent so many time, so much time on those two rooms getting stuff that didn't allow me to complete. So, but I did get eleven thousand experience, uh, mostly due to, you know, mining tons and tons of coin piles. So three hundred and thirty-six coin piles, which gave me almost half of that eleven thousand. Pretty much half of it came from one room uh, in that vault. But it did pop us up two levels. Uh, it also got us, I claimed the uh, jewels reward, which was just the four chromatic steel. And then the expertises. I was talking about this when I realized I was on pause, but every five levels we get an access to an expertise extra expertise which means there's a total of 20 expertise points and we collected that one gold thing we'll do gear forging in the next episode 
Um, but I just, yeah, did want to talk about here on the expertises page. So lots of expertises that can give us access to different little quality of life things. Uh, so a lot of these are more geared towards the mid game. Um, and then basically what I do for the early game is I just go for the fortune here. So um, basically this gives us an extra level of fortune on top of whatever fortune we have. So with this one point here, I will now have access to fortune four um, on the diamond pickaxe because we can craft it in here to get fortune three like that. And then I can break, say, some of this Laramar. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> wrong tool. Oh, that went straight into my backpack, that's why. So I have it on the pickup. And just one out of that one, so not so lucky with the Fortune 4, but um, this is why I use the Silk Touch inside, is because I like to get up to level 10 even before I start breaking any of these ores, so that I've got the full Fortune 5 for, um, for breaking those ores. That's going to be it for this episode. I hope you all enjoyed, and we will see you in the next one.